Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is James Kirkhoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my top 40 running back rankings for week four of the 2024 fantasy football season. If you're looking for my thoughts on an individual player, you can travel down to the description. There are timestamps down there while you're down there. Of course, if you have not yet already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're making daily fantasy football content, whether it's videos, of course, live streaming every day in order to help you capture a 2024 fantasy football championship. Thank you very much for all the support. And if you're looking for my all-inclusive rankings, either check out Underdog Fantasy and of course, the Patreon, all that information down in the description. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's talk about running backs beginning with matchups. You guys know how much of an effort I put into involving matchups in the weekly conversation because of how valuable of a variable it is. The efforts of the 11 other defenders on the opposite side of the field who are attempting to stop our running backs definitely play a huge you know, overall factor as to the potential successes or failures of our running backs. Therefore, we talk about running back rushing statistics allowed thus far this season from weeks one through three. The Dallas Cowboys, based on rushing yards and rushing touchdowns, are allowing over 25 fantasy points per game on average. So, of course, we want to take advantage of matchups like the Cowboys, Miami Dolphins, Carolina Panthers, LA Rams, Raiders, etc. Now, I don't include receiving statistics primarily because the overall usage of a running back is based on the offensive coordinator and, of course, that running back's receiving ability rather than the overall matchup and we've gone ahead and done tests over the course of the last couple seasons to prove that therefore we approach with the following and trying to take advantage of these upcoming matchups we'll refer back to these statistics over the course of today's episode but we're also going to keep in mind that there are some matchups that we might want to avoid of course the detroit lions and baltimore ravens at the bottom of this conversation allowing the fewest fantasy points per game to opposing running backs are also allowing less than three yards per carry to opposing running backs statistics that we have to keep in mind when thinking about potentially playing of course james Cook against the Baltimore Ravens, or whether it's Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet against the Detroit Lions going into the given week. With this all covered, let's go ahead and transition into talking about my top 40 running back rankings, beginning with our number one, Saquon Barkley of the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, it's it's clear in a way he is an automatic start. Not only is he leading the National Football League in rushing yards, but also rushing touchdowns. He's coming off of an incredible performance against the New Orleans Saints, who started off hot, but of course, Saquon Barkley extinguished their fire. Going into this upcoming week's matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the only thing that we're really looking at is if, in fact, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are once again for a second consecutive week going to be missing Kalijah Kansi and, of course, Vita Vea to their interior defense alignment. If they're going to be out, Saquon Barkley should be running all over this defense. And even if they're available in playing, Saquon Barkley is still an automatic start at the running back position. Alvin Kamara taking on the Atlanta Falcons. A division rival who, over the course of the last five games in which he has taken on the Atlanta Falcons, four of those games have included him getting over 100 total yards. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because the last three games for Alvin Kamara have consisted of over 110 total yards in each of those three contests, being able to get himself over 20 touches in each of the last three games. We know that Gerald McCoy, their starting center, is going to the injured reserve, having you know the injury that sustained this last week. That is obviously going to play a huge impact on the potential of this offensive line. But nonetheless, Alvin Kamara on the ground through the air, getting so much opportunity and leading to his overall fantasy success. Number three, we have Brees Hall. Pretty obvious here. Even though we have seen an increase in the overall usage of Braylon Allen, the number two running back of this offense, Brees Hall over the course of the last two weeks in a half PPR has put up 20.9 and 16.3 fantasy points while getting 21 touches in each of those overall games. So really, we have no issue with the overall use of Braylon Allen. And going forward, as long as Brees Hall continues to get his ample amount of touches, he's going to lead to success. This upcoming week takes on the Denver Broncos, one of the best matchups at the position. Not only that, but also Brees Hall has his own history against the Denver Broncos. In his rookie season 2022, after having, what, like 10 fantasy points in just like the first drive of the game against the Denver Broncos, unfortunately, in the second drive, tears his ACL. The next following year in week five, as a revenge tour, goes up against the Denver Broncos and has a monster performance. Once again, for a third consecutive year, taking on the Denver Broncos should have himself an opportunity to exact more revenge on the team that, of course, led to his ACL injury. Moving on to our number four, to close out the S here, we have Kyron Williams. Now, this time last week, I had him as my number 20 overall running back. But as the week progressed, I had a change of heart. Because of all the injuries that had taken place to the San Francisco 49ers, it seemed like this was going to be a far closer game than originally anticipated. And that's exactly what happened on Sunday morning's rankings. Again, I live stream every single Sunday morning from 7 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to swing on by if you guys want updated rankings at each individual position. But I went ahead and I moved him into my top 10 running back position, and I'm glad I did so. Scored three touchdowns, even had a front flip for a touchdown to have an exclamation point on the week of 30 fantasy points, an incredible performance. Now he has an opportunity of taking on the Chicago Bears, a Chicago Bears defense that got torched by Indianapolis Colts running backs who combined for 25 carries, 
126 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. It is the third best matchup at the position. And Kyron Williams, of course, should be implied to have himself a lot of success. Now, before we continue talking about the running back position again, like I mentioned earlier, for those of you guys who want my rankings, every single Sunday morning sent from my email directly to yours, by position, by tier, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, kicker, defense, and flex, half PPR, full PPR. Be sure to sign up today using code Andrew via Underdog Fantasy. All you got to do is use code Andrew, make a first-time deposit minimum of $10. You'll be able to claim the first-time deposit offer, but of course, get my rankings every single Sunday for the remainder of the season. For those of you wondering if you're eligible, of course, you have to, of course, be eligible based on your current location, based on the right side of the screen. But not only that, you must have not used the code or deposited before. So if, in fact, you aren't eligible, be sure to go ahead and check out the Patreon. All those rankings available there and much more. Thank you very much. Okay, continue on with running back conversation. We have Bijan Robinson as our number five to begin the next tier. Bijan Robinson taking on the New Orleans Saints last season in the two matchups in which he took on this defense in week 12 and week 18 was able to combine for over 120 total yards in both games and one touchdown minimum. Hopefully, we can continue to find success against the division rival, and hopefully this is going to be a close game between the two. Obviously, last week, in a game in which the New Orleans Saints weren't up 30 points at halftime, their run-stop defense got completely torched by Saquon Barkley, and hopefully Bijan Robinson can go ahead and show signs of life and do the exact same thing. Coming off a performance in which, of course, 16 carries for 31 rushing yards, less than two yards per carry on average, isn't the Bijan Robinson way. So hopefully he's going to get back on track. Luckily, he was able to score his first touchdown of the year last week, and hopefully that is only going to continue as a streak. Our number six is Jordan Mason. They're taking on the New England Patriots. If, in fact, the New England Patriots show up and are very similar to what they were on Thursday Night Football. This is going to be a one-sided affair in which the San Francisco 49ers are going to be able to exact some revenge and find themselves in the winning column for the first time since Week 1. Of course, a two-game slide most recently, but ultimately this is going to be a Jordan Mason game. The anticipation is that he's going to be given an opportunity just like he has over the course of the season thus far, 20 plus touches per game. Unfortunately, this last week wasn't able to find the end zone, even though he had four rushing attempts inside the 10 yard line of the Rams side of the field, he wasn't able to find the end zone. This upcoming week, the 49ers should be able to bounce back and stun this Patriots offense first and foremost, then get themselves a lot of opportunity offensively to score. Number seven, we have James Conner. James Conner should be a great play. Now, I didn't warn many of you last week because of the matchup against the Detroit Lions that there was a potential in which James Conner could end up having himself a rough week. He did. Nine carries for 17 rushing yards simply did not help the Arizona Cardinals. And that was the worst performance in terms of fantasy points that James Conner has put up in a half PPR since week two of 2021. So again, those performances are not going to be common. And there's going to be a bounce back week going up against the Washington Commanders, the 12th best matchup at the position, allowing over 14 fantasy points per game just off of rushing statistics isolated. James Conner should be able to get himself back into the top RB1 conversation. Our number eight, we have Aaron Jones, the thumbnail of today's episode. Here's the deal. This week, Aaron Jones has a revenge game against his former team, the Green Bay Packers. And considering how well he has played thus far, coming off of a week in which he had 100 rushing yards, 5 receptions, 46 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown, the fact that the Minnesota Vikings have beat both, of course, the Houston Texans and San Francisco 49ers in each of the last two games, fantastic, now have to take on another potential rival, not only within their own division, but potentially a team that they may see in the NFL playoffs. Aaron Jones is expected to have himself a huge performance. Amongst all running backs thus far this season who have had a base minimum of 15 total rushing attempts, he is number four amongst all of them in terms of yards after contact per attempt with 4.02. Again, he is putting up incredible numbers at his age. Despite all of that, he is a part of an offense that is going to continue to find success. And going into this week, I'm anticipating them to run over this Green Bay Packers run-stop defense. Our number nine to begin the B tier is Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor takes on the Pittsburgh Steelers, quite literally the most difficult matchup at the position. Now, even though it is a very difficult matchup and the Steelers have held running backs thus far this season to only 3.35 yards per carry on average, Jonathan Taylor is a different running back. He is going to find success regardless of the overall matchup. We just have to hope that Anthony Richardson can help him find success. Again, Anthony Richardson in two of the last three games has had 10 or fewer completions in those contests. So hopefully this passing game for the Colts isn't going to be the reason why Jonathan Taylor struggles because again, they're able to stack the box and force Anthony Richardson to throw the ball. That could be an absolute brutal overall week, but we're hoping that Jonathan Taylor behind this elite offensive line is going to continue to find success after a huge breakout week against the Chicago Bears. Number 10, we have Derrick Henry. Thus far this season, every single week has scored a rushing touchdown, and that should not stop even going up against the Buffalo Bills. The only thing that I worry about going up against the Buffalo Bills, especially considering how great they played last night against the Jacksonville Jaguars, is if in fact the Baltimore Ravens are going to be in a negative game script. We've talked about this earlier this season. 
the Baltimore Ravens with Todd Monken as their offensive coordinator in situations in which they are in a negative game script and they're trying to come back in games. Unfortunately, they do not prioritize the running game, which no team really does. So in this overall situation, it could be a rough week if, in fact, they get down early and, of course, have to utilize more Justice Hill than Derrick Henry within the game, but should be able to find himself in the end zone at a base minimum for the fourth consecutive game. On number 11, we have James Cook taking on the Baltimore Ravens. James Cook has one of the more difficult matchups. The Ravens thus far this season have only allowed 2.6 yards per carry to opposing running backs. Now, James Cook, of course, besides you know scoring a rushing touchdown for another consecutive week, didn't get it yoinked by Josh Allen, which is a huge plus. Not only that, but he got himself a lot of utilization within the receiving game early and often. Besides Khalil Shakir within the short yard receiving game, it was all James Cook. He even had a deep ball opportunity in terms of making a play down the field, dropped a receiving touchdown. Could have very easily scored. Later in the game, Ty Johnson was able to exact the revenge and score on that same play, but later in the drive. But either way, James Cook again finding success a lot as of late because he's finding the end zone. If that does not once again happen this upcoming week, could be a rough week in a very difficult matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. But we're hoping that the Buffalo Bills offense continues to pour on points on every team that they face. On number 12, to close out the RB1 conversation, is Jameer Gibbs taking on the Seattle Seahawks. In the last two games in which the Detroit Lions have taken on the Seattle Seahawks, in 2022 and 2023, both those games have been effective shootouts. 31-37, to 45-48. to Both times the Lions lost, but both times huge shootouts. We're hoping for the same thing this upcoming week. The only thing that really concerns us with Jameer Gibbs is, of course, David Montgomery has outtouched him in each of the last three games, 59 to 51 total. That is definitely a tough pill to swallow thus far this season, considering where we drafted Gibbs in comparison to David Montgomery. But luckily, Gibbs was able to take advantage of the nice hook and ladder that led to his overall fantasy success in this most recent week. Now, speaking of Montgomery, I also want to mention Montgomery because he has found himself an abundance of success and continues to not only outtouch, but outscore Jameer Gibbs every week. Thus far this season in a half PPR, David Montgomery has outscored Gibbs every single week. So you may be wondering, Andrew, why do you have him at 13 in comparison to 12? Well, of course, the center for the Detroit Lions did, in fact, you know, get injured. He's going to miss some time. And because of that, David Montgomery may be less effective because the interior rushing offense of this offensive line isn't going to be as potent as it typically is. But either way, out touching Gibbs, getting himself touchdowns each of the last three games, it leads to a lot of success. We're hoping for a shootout within the given week and David Montgomery continuing his consistency of success. Obviously, just looking at his most recent runs against the Arizona Cardinals, again, everything is green. The dude is an absolute machine. Of course, these overall statistics and graphic based on next-gen stats. Number 14, we have Brian Robinson Jr., who again continues to put together great performances. Even though he only scored 10 fantasy points, we'll take it. Austin Eckler obviously took a rushing touchdown in that game. Obviously, another rushing touchdown was taken by Jaden Daniels on the goal line. Either way, Brian Robinson Jr. has played very well and has an opportunity against the Arizona Cardinals, the 10th best matchup at the position. They're allowing over 15 fantasy points per game just off of rushing statistics isolated. The reason why I have Brian Robinson Jr. so elevated in my overall rankings in comparisons to weeks past is because Austin Eckler did, in fact, leave the game with a concussion. And if, in fact, that concussion protocol isn't cleared by this upcoming weekend's game, of course, Brian Robinson will be the lone back and we'll be, you know, collecting all of the receiving statistics that typically go in the direction of Austin Eckler, which typically is like four or five receptions and the potential of getting yourself an extra 30 to 40 receiving yards, which would be incredible. Going into this upcoming week, again, it's a great matchup against Arizona. Over the course of the last three games, the commanders have prioritized the running game. Cliff Kingsbury takes on his former team, a nice potential game in which he can exact some revenge. Again, once you're giving Brian Robinson 15 touches per game on average, as long as he falls into the end zone, he's in a perfect position for fantasy success. Number 15, speaking of finding fantasy success, last night, Zach Moss, besides, of course, Brian Robinson Jr. in that game finding success, Zach Moss was great. 18.2 fantasy points, was able to luckily score a touchdown late in that game, but totaled 17 total touches and played 76% of the overall snaps. Now, even though Zamir White last week wasn't able to take advantage of the matchup, Zach Moss will take advantage of the Carolina Panthers matchup, the third best at the position, allowing over 20 fantasy points per game, just off of rushing statistics isolated. Not to mention the fact that Zach Moss last night had six targets, five receptions, 39 receiving yards, effectively really is the RB1 in this team. And even though Chase Brown did outrush him, there is still going to be a lot of touches going in the direction of Zach Moss in the given matchup. Number 16, we have Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard's coming off of a rough week. Only 10 opportunities and 9 touches is far less than what he produced in the first two weeks of the season where he was getting himself over 19 opportunities per week, but still played 60 plus percent of the overall snaps within the offense and of course didn't see much usage out of Tajay Spears. Thus far this season, 
Pollard has outcarried Tyshay Spears 39 to 12. And as long as that continues to go in the direction of Pollard, going up against the second best matchup of the week, allowing 20.83 fantasy points per game off of rushing statistics isolated, the Dolphins are going to be in trouble, especially considering if they're not able to settle their quarterback issue, this could be a one-sided affair in the favor of Tony Pollard in the running game of the Tennessee Titans. Number 17, we have Travis Etienne. Based on the overall usage of Tank Bigsby last night, again, we are once again confirming that Tank Bigsby is only going to get himself a lot of utilization in positive game scripts. And based on the way that this offense and defense has played thus far this season, we may not see very many positive game scripts for the Jacksonville Jaguars going forward. Therefore, Travis Etienne coming off a week in which he had 11 carries for 68 rushing yards, relatively efficient there, six targets, four receptions, only 17 receiving yards, able to get himself over 10 fantasy points without scoring a touchdown. We'll take that. Once we get into positive situations in terms of game scripts, finding himself in the end zone, he will be far more efficient and far more fantasy effective. Going up against the Houston Texans, a division rival, should find himself a lot of success within the given week. Hopefully a high-scoring game. Number 18, we have Najee Harris. Najee Harris elevates in terms of his overall rankings, primarily because, again, Jalen Warren, dealing with that hamstring injury still, exited the game on Sunday against the Los Angeles Chargers. If, in fact, Najee Harris is going to be continuing to go ahead and get himself upwards of 17-plus touches per game, coming off of a week in which he had 18 rushes, 5 targets, 5 receptions, 23 total touches combined, that is an incredible number. We're going to welcome any sort of receiving utilization that Najee Harris can collect. And going into the matchup against the Indianapolis Colts, the 8th best at the position, allowing over 15.6 fantasy points per game just off of rushing statistics isolated, the assumption is that Najee Harris should find a lot of success and hopefully, for the first time this season, finds himself in the end zone. Moving on to our number 19, we have Josh Jacobs. I understand that many of you, based on the most recent production of Josh Jacobs, aren't satisfied. Obviously, just a couple weeks ago, he had himself 32 rushing attempts in a singular game. I understand he fumbled into the end zone, could have had himself an even bigger performance, and he's coming off a performance in which, of course, we saw a lot of Emmanuel Wilson in that second half. It wasn't a surprise. That game was a two-score game, and they wanted to utilize another running back in order to give Josh Jacobs a little bit of a rest because, again, they were running him into the ground. Going forward... Hopefully, in the return of Jordan Love, I understand it's a difficult matchup taking on the Minnesota Vikings, but this offense has far more potential upside for scoring touchdowns. Even though they're taking on a top three NFL defense this week, Josh Jacobs should be in sight for having a far better week than what he produced last week against the Tennessee Titans. Number 20, we have Devon Achan. Until I get a confirmation as to who the starting quarterback is for the Miami Dolphins, I'm going to leave Achan in this lower tier conversation of the RB2 uh, range. Primarily because, again, if it's going to be Tim Boyle or Skylar Thompson, I don't know if I can trust Devon Achan for fantasy purposes. The offense really just can't move the ball down the field. Now, we did hear from Mike McDaniel earlier today. Someone did ask him, is there a chance that Tyler Huntley could end up being the starting quarterback? If, in fact, that does end up being the case by the end of the week, Devon Achan's rankings will therefore move up because I do believe that the Dolphins' offense will be far more capable of competing, not winning, but at least competing within the overall matchup against Tennessee with a different quarterback under center. Number 21, we have Chuba Hubbard coming off of one of his best weeks of his entire career. 21 carries for 114, five receptions on five targets for 55 yards and a touchdown, 25.4 fantasy points. Andy Dalton's overall presence elevated this offense, and we're hoping that is going to take place for another consecutive game as Andy Dalton leads this Carolina Panthers team against his former team, the Cincinnati Bengals. A Bengals team that, again, has allowed the seventh most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs in terms of rushing statistics, over 16 and a half fantasy points per game within that category. Chuba Hubbard, again, in the absence of Jonathan Brooks, should maintain as the RB1 of this team, having himself a lot of value on the ground and, of course, through the air. Number 22. We have Devin Singletary. If it wasn't for the fact that Devin Singletary fell short on the one-yard line on purpose in order to kill the clock, he would have had himself two touchdowns last week. Very many of us could have had ourselves an additional six fantasy points that could have saved your week. But either way, Devin Singletary coming off a performance in which he had 20 total touches and now has an opportunity of taking on the Dallas Cowboys. When you're able to get yourself 20 touches and 16-plus fantasy points, maybe even 20-plus fantasy points if he had been greedy and scored against the Browns, a team in which, of course, the Giants should have won 28-15. to Most recently, the Dallas Cowboys beat the Cleveland Browns 33-17. to So if, in fact, the Dallas Cowboys and New York Giants are going to have themselves a competitive game on a short week on Thursday Night Football, the Cowboys are the best matchup at the running back position. Devin Singletary is an automatic start in my mind going into the given week. Number 23, we have Ramondre Stevenson. The only issue that we have with Ramondre Stevenson is the potential in which he isn't given a high volume of touches. If this game gets away from them, if Jacoby Brissett is not able to help move this you know, team down the field, if the running game is not effective, 
it is going to lead to Ramondre Stevenson, unfortunately, being an afterthought within this offense, just like last week against the New York Jets. If that does take place, of course, a lower end RB2 is where he kind of values out at. Hopefully, he can be far more effective. Hopefully, they can give him the touches. And hopefully, the 49ers defense struggles in terms of stopping the run like they have all season long thus far. Number 24, we have J.K. Dobbins. The only reason I have J.K. Dobbins as low as 24 is because, again, Justin Herbert's injury dictates whether or not this team is going to find success. And if Justin Herbert is not going to be suiting up against the Kansas City Chiefs because of this ankle sprain, then, of course, J.K. Dobbins is at the mercy of this Kansas City defense that thus far this season have only allowed 3.34 yards per carry to opposing running backs. Obviously, not great overall statistics, and hopefully, J.K. Dobbins will have the overall presence of Justin Herbert. This most recent week, it was the biggest differential in overall snaps and total touches between J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. He's continuing to win the job and pull farther away from Gus every single week. Number 25, we have Cam Akers. In the potential absence of Joe Mixon, still dealing with an ankle injury, we would fire up Cam Akers once again. Again, Cam Akers taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, the 13th best matchup at the position, allowing nearly 14 fantasy points per game within the overall category. The Week 3 Texans, of course, got blown out, and there wasn't much overall rushing opportunity for Cam Akers, but this upcoming week, considering how horribly the Jacksonville Jaguars offense has played as of recently, uh, again, we would assume that, of course, the Houston Texans should be able to take an early lead and hopefully run the ball with Cam Akers to find value. If Joe Mixon does, in fact, play this week, he'd probably be in my top 15 rankings, to say the least. Number 26, we have Zach Charbonnet. First and foremost, if in fact Kenneth Walker does play, I will update the rankings for Sunday morning. Be sure to swing on by 7 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll have updated rankings on screen. Thank you very much. But the matchup in itself for Zach Charbonnet this week is horribly difficult. There's a reason why James Conner is coming off a week in which he had nine carries for 17 rushing yards. The Lions thus far this season are allowing only 2.76 yards per carry to opposing running backs. And over the course of the last 24 games, they've only allowed once to an RB1 that has opposed them over 70 rushing yards. That was Christian McCaffrey in the NFC Championship game. This run-stop defense has been incredible since the second half of the 2022 season. Just putting it to perspective, just how great this run-stop defense is. Even though the last two matchups against the Seattle Seahawks and Detroit Lions have led in the favor of the Seattle Seahawks winning both those shootouts, 48-45, 37-31, it's mainly because of the passing attack and the running game may be an afterthought within this overall conversation. Moving on to our 27, we have Jerome Ford. You know, one week after we did see Deontay Foreman in week two take over this backfield had far more overall touches than Jerome Ford all of a sudden it's all Ford 100% of the way Jerome Ford leading in terms of overall snaps getting himself 13 overall touches 14 overall opportunities and even though he wasn't the greatest fantasy contributor against the New York Giants which was a great matchup he has an opportunity to get himself a little bit of a bounce back performance here taking on the Las Vegas Raiders a defense that is allowing 5.61 yards per carry to opposing running backs, number one amongst all teams, the fifth best matchup, nearly 20 fantasy points per game. This should be a Jerome Ford staple week in which hopefully he's able to find himself a lot of success on the ground. Obviously having three missing starting offensive linemen isn't going to help in this overall you know, position, but we're going to have to take that into account considering all the injuries this team has sustained. Number 28, we have Rashad White. Man, Rashad White scares me. Yes, he had himself 12 opportunities and 11 touches, but he only accumulated 35 total yards. It is brutal. Thus far this season, with 31 rushing attempts, 66 rushing yards, a 2.13 yard per carry average. Even though it's not worse than the overall efforts of someone like DeAndre Swift, it is not very promising considering how effective we have seen his backup running back, Bucky Irving, been thus far this season. And once we are hearing Todd Bowles say Bucky Irving is getting more touches and more snaps going forward, it is very much so a scary thing for the upside of Rashad White going forward. He really is reminding me of a glorified version of Austin Eckler, he's getting himself receiving usage. We're hoping for that. We're hoping for red zone utilization and finding the end zone. And if he doesn't do so, the rushing yardage and attempts aren't going to be there on a weekly basis. Let's move on to Braylon Allen, our number 29. Yes, I have Braylon Allen ranked this high based on his overall contributions over the course of the last two games. Again, averaging 14.7 fantasy points per game in the last two weeks is no joke. Sure, in one of those games, he scored two touchdowns, but most recently, coming off a performance in which he put up 8.3 fantasy points with 14 total touches. If this is going to be a one-sided affair, which I do anticipate it being, because Bo Nix taking on this you know, New York Jets defense is not going to be an easy matchup, should lead to a lot of opportunities in the running game for both Braylon Allen and, of course, Brees Hall. This should be a one-sided affair, and hopefully the two-headed monster are both able to find themselves in the end zone. Number 30, we have Bucky Irving. The reason why I wanted to go ahead and show his overall rushes, because again, these are the reasons why 
Bucky Irving is getting more opportunities. He is far more effective in terms of his overall rushing usage in comparison to Rashad White. And as long as that is going to continue to be the case, he's going to get himself more opportunity coming off of a week in which, again, he had himself 9.9 .9 fantasy points in comparison to Rashad White 6.0. Again, they do take on the Philadelphia Eagles, and even though Bucky Irving has been far more efficient, in his 55 total snaps, he has 30 overall touches. On his 25 total rushing attempts, a 6.16 yard per carry average. Todd Bowles expects to give him more touches and going forward, if that's going to be the case, should be a top 30 back for fantasy purposes. Number 31 is Carson Steele. Now, we're going to have to wait and see what exactly the status of Kareem Hunt is. So I want to go ahead and preemptively just put Carson Steele here for safety. If, in fact, the Chargers are going to be you know, Justin Herbert lists, the Chargers at that point will get blown out. And Carson Steele will get himself a lot of opportunity within the given game. We're just going to have to wait and see how it kind of pans out within the given week. But again, there will be a lot of potential rushing attempts going in the direction of Steele if, in fact, Kareem Hunt is once again not activated. We'll have to keep an eye on that as the week progresses. Moving on to our number 32, we have Austin Eckler. Like I mentioned earlier, he did get a concussion in last night's game against the Bengals. If, in fact, he's not able to clear concussion protocol, because again, it is a Monday game, a short week going into Sunday's contest this upcoming week against the Arizona Cardinals if in fact he is not prepared for the matchup does not clear concussion protocol don't worry about him don't worry this overall ranking but if in fact he does play he's been fantasy relevant every single week with over eight fantasy points in each of these games and a half PPR coming off of his best week yet in terms of fantasy purposes and he left the game midway through 33 we have Javante Williams again Javante Williams is not getting himself a lot of opportunity not being very efficient with his overall touches and quite honestly a disappointment so even though he had himself a goal on opportunity and it looked like he broke the plane, and even though Sean Payton challenged it, they still said it wasn't a touchdown. Then a play later, Jaleel McLaughlin steals a rushing touchdown. Very brutal. Late in the game, the third string running back got the vast majority of the overall touches in order to kill the clock. These are things that worry me, but Javante Williams technically still is the starting running back based on overall usage and, of course, based on overall snaps. Number 34 is Chase Brown. This is a week in which you can utilize Chase Brown, primarily because, again, the Carolina Panthers' one-stop defense is non-existent. And I know that Zemir White struggled, but we still saw Alexander Madison score over 10 fantasy points. So it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility if, in fact, we get the Cincinnati Bengals to gain an early lead. Perhaps Chase Brown and Zach Moss can both be relevant within the given week at a top 36 capacity, which is my anticipation. Chase Brown last night with less rushing attempts had far more rushing yards than what Zach Moss was able to produce, which, again, continues to... Get us in a direction where perhaps Chase Brown continues to dig in more of the overall workload rather than just giving, you know, a guy like Zach Moss 17 total touches. Maybe we end up getting a 14 to 10 split going forward. Moving on. Our number 35 is Rico Dowdle. If we're going to be in a situation in which, of course, this Dallas Cowboys defense cannot stop a soul for the third week in a row, of course, Rico Dowdle will be implied to, you know, play a lot more. Rico Dowdle coming off a week in which he had 11 touches for over 50 yards. Again, he's going to slowly but surely take over this role. And I think in a short week, unless Ezekiel Elliott is going to get himself a goal line carry, he's not going to be more valuable than Rico Dowdle within the upcoming matchup. Number 36 is DeAndre Swift. He's technically still the starting running back. As to how they're going to utilize him and Roshan Johnson is to be determined. But still, it's one of the better matchups you could possibly find. The fourth best at the position, nearly allowing 20 fantasy points per game just off rushing statistics isolated. I understand just about more than anybody that DeAndre Swift is averaging less than two yards per carry, which is brutal. But again, if he's still the starting running back and he's still going to get himself over 10 rushing attempts, still has some sort of value potentially in line. Number 37 is Ty J. Spears. Again, if this is going to be a one-sided affair in which the Miami Dolphins are starting Skylar Thompson or Tim Boyle, then we'd, we would potentially anticipate to see a lot of opportunity go in the direction of these two running backs. Ty J. Spears is primarily the receiving back, while Tony Pollard is going to be the primary rusher. So either way, Ty J. Spears has value coming off of a solid week of over eight fantasy points, despite the lack of overall touches, only six within the given week. Moving on to our number 38, we have Kareem Hunt. Again, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to wait and see what his status is. But if, in fact, he does get activated to the main roster, I would assume that he's going to take over the role of not only being a primary rusher, but also taking over a lot of the receiving work that Samaj P. Ryan is typically implicated for in the last couple weeks. Moving on to our number 39, Roshan Johnson. In week three, saw his first offensive snaps of the season. Prior to that, was pretty much a special teams player. But in his overall opportunities of, what, eight rushing attempts, 30 rushing yards, four receptions for 32 receiving yards, was the most efficient running back in the overall conversation. DeAndre Swift averaging 1.84 yards per carry thus far leads us in the direction in which Roshan Johnson could very easily take over the starting running back role of the Chicago Bears. Moving on to our number 40, Ezekiel Elliott. If, in fact, again, he has an opportunity on the goal line. Again, this is technically a 
far easier matchup for the Dallas Cowboys in comparison to taking on the Saints and, of course, Baltimore Ravens defense. If, in fact, Ezekiel Elliott is implied to potentially have a goal line opportunity, could very easily score himself somewhere between 8 to 10 points within the given week. Therefore, we have to go ahead and include him in the top 40. Okay, those are going to cover my top 40 running back rankings. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have not yet already, subscribe to the channel. Of course, later tonight, around 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be live streaming. If you guys are interested in asking any questions regarding waiver wire, trades, etc., be sure to swing on by. And until tomorrow, where I'll be talking about my top 40 wide receiver rankings. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.